Synthetics in androids in the Alien franchise prefer to be addressed as artificial persons, and truth be told, it is primarily via these characters that the franchise has managed to delve into existential questions in the first place. So, if the whole idea of creating and coexisting with artificial life forms fascinate you, then you're bound to be a fan of the Alien franchise. You see, as the Alien series is seen to evolve, you cannot deny the simple fact that the synthetics are seen evolving too. And besides the usual terror factor involving the highly hostile extraterrestrial xenomorph species, the franchise is simultaneously seen to depict humanity's increasing dependence on technology and adding to this, the moral dilemmas that come with it. Anyway, this brings us to the main contents of today's video, where we will be exploring all variants of the synthetics and androids featured in the Alien franchise. Are you ready? Let's dive right into the video then. But before we get into our explanation, we do have one very small request. If you enjoy our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. What or who are synthetics? Well, to have a proper understanding of the different variants of synthetics featured in the franchise, it is important that we comprehend a few basic things about these biomechanical humanoids. Synthetics are basically robots that copy humans, both in terms of their looks as well as actions. While there was a time when synthetics not only represented a huge industry, but were also in extensive demand, it was because of a violent upheaval that eventually led to their downfall. Synthetics were deemed illegal, and virtually all extant units were terminated in a mass recall. Now, when it comes to synthetics, they were initially a creation of the American conglomerate Borgia Industries around 2030. If you can recall the first Ulysses models, you will remember them as bulky bipedal machines bearing more similarities to a machine-like robot than a synthetic human. These models were majorly used by the Neonopolis Police Department, mainly for riot suppression or for personal security venture. Moving on to the later part of the 21st century, synthetics had made such progress that an android and a human put together seemed almost impossible to tell apart. Furthermore, with Wayland Corporation coming up with a David series and Wayland Utani developing the aesthetically identical yet updated Walter model, it became all the more tricky to point out the difference. Well, in the broader sense, synthetics were a fundamental form of artificial intelligence, but when speaking legally, they fell under the category of a property. Although a synthetic's cosmetic appearance would seem to be an excess feature, as per practical experience, humans, in general, are psychologically not able to connect with a synthetic that looks like not human at all. No wonder the physical appearance and simulated behavioral patterns of synthetics have always been prearranged. Now, the modern synthetic is an exceedingly complex machine. It is a lot faster, stronger, and better coordinated than an average human. A very intriguing result of a synthetic's construction is that under certain circumstances, they're pretty much immune to the alien aggression. There have been several instances when a synthetic has been seemingly spared by a xenomorph, whereas a human in the same situation has been on the receiving end. An obvious example is shown in the movie Alien Resurrection. Remember the scene that has everyone swimming underwater through a flooded galley to reach Betty? Well, the group was pursued by two cloned xenomorphs in particular, one of which ended up grabbing the character of Sabra Hillard by her ankle and dragging her away the minute it had its chance. Another situation arose when the Autumn Annelie Call fell straight into the water just a few meters away from the clone xenomorph, but she was not assaulted or even harmed by the xenomorph in the slightest manner. Of course, having said that, there have also been cases when the xenomorphs have targeted synthetics, and there's just no denying that. Anyway, now that we have a basic understanding of the synthetics, androids, let's get on to exploring the variants, finally. Colonial Marine Synthetic 
As the name suggests, these synthetics were a creation of the United States Colonial Marine Corps, with the sole goal of supplementing the human troops. Apparently, after giving a boost to their ranks with the synthetic womb soldiers, the USCM began to experiment further by strengthening their ranks with combat androids, or mainly the integer, and in turn, supporting synthetics in the form of bishops and esthers. Now, it goes without saying that colonial marine synthetics were a lot more economical and easy to maintain than their human counterpart. Also, as per reports, these models were seen employed in action as early as 2192. Combat Android what you're looking at happens to be androids designed and built exclusively to serve combat purposes. While it is true that the Geneva Convention strictly bar the equipping of androids with weapons or unconstrained combat abilities, combat models have been extensively put to use by the Wayland yutani Corporation. In case you didn't know, the company frequently resorted to using unlicensed manufactured units for security purposes at critical Wayland yutani installations. Furthermore, the relaxation of rules and regulations even led to the USCM's employment of combat androids. Now, in contrast to commercial androids like the David and Bishop models, which are designed in a manner that they get perfectly integrated into human society. The combat androids are constructed solitarily for the purpose of combat, and as such, they are often devoid of the aesthetic features of the commercial synthetics. It is fitting to state that combat androids are a lot cruder when it comes to their design, and they have the capability of withstanding quite a degree of firepower before finally being deactivated. So, please do not be taken aback to find a combat android carrying on a fight despite losing its limb and head in the process. Also, given their higher resistance to damage and greater strength compared to humans, and add to this, their inability to physically feel pain, fear, or any moral concerns for that matter, combat androids have been preferred over live combatants time and again in certain situations. In fact, Many of these combat androids have been used as a compliant, no questions asked bodyguard, primarily because of their unwavering commitment to their duty. Corporate Security Drone As the name implies, corporate security drones are synthetics that are signed up by the Wayland yutani Corporation, primarily keeping the task of security in mind. Now, visually speaking, they are pretty basic and almost bear similarities with the Siegson Corporation's Working Joe models. But having said that, corporate security drones have way more personality and uniqueness in them, and there is just no denying that. In fact, there was this one such model, Davis One, that had not only managed to break free of its corporate programming, but also develop free will in the process. Corporate security drones in general bear more similar traits to combat androids. Also, let's not disregard the fact that they are constructed for both combat as well as security purposes. They're not capable of physically feeling pain either, but their systems are formed in a manner so that they can feel specific injuries and, in turn, also put forward a substitute behavior for greater effectiveness. A few years down the line, Wayland yutani secured the services of a superior model known as Franklin. Given that the Franklins were a more advanced form of the Davis models, they had this metal exterior along with an overall daunting demeanor. Both Davis and Franklin models were put to use for and against the USEM and the elite forces of the Free World Empire known as the Royal Marine Commando. Synthetic Sleeper Agents These agents are synthetics that are programmed in a manner to mask their real identity, along with a purpose from the people around them. The goal is to turn into a covert agent, mostly one with nefarious purposes. Now, there are some sleeper agents that will function as androids programmed with ulterior motives, which, of course, are hidden from their associates, and in all probability, even from the android itself. Looking at the progress made in android technology, the development has undoubtedly let some synthetics even pose as humans. Also, synthetic sleeper agents are not exactly based on commercial models. They are more like modified constructs that are manufactured, mainly with a mission in mind. The Wayland yutani Corporation was particularly known for putting to use synthetic sleeper agents. They were secretly programmed to carry forward the ultimate goals of the company often at the cost of the lives of human employees who, no point for guessing, would mostly be unaware of the android's true mission set by the corporation. 
Mind you, the fundamental programming of a synthetic sleeper agent will not allow it to cause harm or endanger any human for that matter. But then again, it is completely possible that a particular software is installed within an agent that would lead it to eventually work against anyone who comes across as an obstacle to its objectives. Auton. In simple word, autons are machines that are manufactured by machines. These second generation androids were primarily created to regenerate the faltering synthetics industry of the 24th century. However, the plan pretty much had an adverse effect when the autons ended up revolting against their very human masters in an event that's popularly known as the recall. Now, to those of you who are wondering why did the Autons rebel, it so happened that the Autons did not like being told what to do anymore. Given that the programming of the Autons worked a tad too well, it dawned upon them that their creators, Oil and Yutani Corporation to be more precise, were actually making use of synthetics for missions that were unethical. At the end of the day, we're stressing on missions that would cause humans harm and that is what led them to rise up against their corrupt human master in order to defend humanity as a whole. An elite call from the movie Alien Resurrection was an Auton who literally broke into the USM Auriga with the sole goal of putting an end to the military's illegal cloning process of recreating the aliens as a bioweapon. Hyperdyne 129 The Hyperdyne 1294, at times known as Love Slave or Sex Sim, was an android model that was primarily created for pleasurable services. And truth be told, they were quite a rage amongst some high-class circles in 22nd century Earth. That being said, these androids were also programmed to perform a vast range of other duties, besides the one that has just been mentioned. Marvelous Verdict Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. So, what are your thoughts on the synthetics and androids featured in the Alien franchise? Which variant do you fancy the most? We would love to know your thoughts about them in the comment section down below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please do leave a thumbs up and stay tuned with us as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Till then, goodbye, and thanks for watching. Have a nice one!